So we're talking today with Dr. Brian Donner. He's Chief Executive Officer and Medical Director for Compassionate Certification Centers, which is presenting the 2017 World Medical Marijuana Business Conference and Expo in Pittsburgh on April 21st and 22nd. Dr. Donner, thanks for talking with us today. Thanks for having me. Ed. Pleasure to be here. So this is a very ambitious conference you're doing. You're expecting 1,200 doctors? Yes, we're absolutely. We're hoping for uh, to get over 1,000 providers there um, to be part of the CME portion of the program that we're going to have. Um, so lofty expectations, but we, we hope to get as many providers there as we could. And who else is this conference for? It's really going to be for everybody and anyone who's interested in, in marijuana and where it is in our country and particularly in Pennsylvania. So not only for clinicians, providers, and patients, but also for businessmen, entrepreneurs, um, college students, job seekers, really everybody would have an interest in this convention. We'll have something for everybody there. Now, how do you address the critics that will say something like, this entire medical marijuana industry is just a cover for getting the door open for recreational use. How do you address that? Absolutely, and, that, and that's a good question. And usually, whenever I, I talk to people about that, it's usually more a matter of education than anything else. When you are able to uh, explain that there is an actual medical utility for uh, um, uh, medical cannabis and marijuana, I think that helps them understand it much, much better. Um, when you can explain that there's certain conditions and, and show proof in the pudding, per se, uh, that's really whenever you can help convince people that this is there's a real utility for it and it's not just uh, on a recreational use how did you first get interested in medical cannabis yeah absolutely i've i've been involved uh, particularly in, in in medical cannabis for uh, probably the last two years um, as a clinician i'm a, a very big uh, researcher and I, I started reading about some of the research uh, and was very intrigued um, i felt that there was need for alternative treatment options particularly in our country uh, for example the the opiate epidemic um, and really that just sort of increased my my personal interest um, I then did some some research from a business and legal standpoint, really trying to understand as much background as I could about it. Um, and then I, I tried to educate myself as well as I could from a uh, from a clinical standpoint. Why is the word compassionate in the name of your organization? Yeah, that's a great question. We that was the most important word that that we can put in there because that's really what we want to focus on. And our organization um, really wants to focus on helping bring providers and and patients together, um, and really making sure that that relation is smooth and symbiotic um, and going to be mutually beneficial. Um, I think that obviously involves a real high sense of compassion in there. So we wanted that to be evident whenever uh, people first come across our organization. Now you're involved with concussion research right now and you've got two members or former members of the NFL coming to this conference. Is that uh, kind of a coincidence or how did that come about? What's the tie-in there? <laughs> no, it's not a coincidence at all to, to be honest. So yeah, I do, uh, I, I help run with my partner Dr. Patel Concussion Clinic and we're currently doing some research there. Um, obviously at this point we really don't have any definitive treatments for concussion or traumatic brain injury. I think that uh, one of the alternatives obviously would be medical marijuana or cannabis uh, um, and so I think that absolutely needs uh, to be explored. So my hope is that by by really getting some athletes and some people who have been out there um, and can and can talk to the community and the community will listen, that could help lead us to research in that particular area and specifically medical marijuana and its impact on concussion. So as you're talking to doctors uh, about your conference, what are the top concerns that they have about cannabis? Absolutely, and I think you, you have two sides of this. You have the, the, the providers, the clinicians who are in support of uh, cannabis and medical marijuana and the ones that are uh, somewhat more uh, hesitant, I would say. For, really, for the supporters, the big thing becomes uh, twofold. Number one, uh, they want to make sure that they're safe from a legal standpoint. The, the, most of the providers I talk to want to initiate this treatment uh, on their patient's behalf or on their benefit, so they want to make sure that they are, are, they are legally uh, sound and what they're doing. 
The other part of that becomes a, a clinical aspect. It, at this point in time, there is really no formal medical education on medical marijuana, so it can be a, a rather intimidating process to undertake. Um, I think that well, doctors will often ask us how they become educated so that they're able to, to do this on their own and really to help their patients and integrate it into, a, into their practice. And that's one of the things that our, our company really focuses on help doing as well. I've seen where the, a great amount of the confusion comes in dosage. They don't know what to recommend for what kinds of conditions. Is that one of the things you're really going to address with this conference? Absolutely. That, that, that's part of it. And to be honest, the dosing parameters that you can come across are very are very widely spread out. Um, it's not only the dosing how much, but what route are you going to take it? Is this transdermal? Is this going to be ingested? So um, there, there, there's a very, uh, there, it's a very finesse uh, type thing. It's more of an art really at a science at this point. And that's why I think we're going to focus on really getting more of a scientific aspect to have some proof in the pudding with this. Talk to me about what is the typical response you get when you're talking to doctors about the endocannabinoid system, the bodily system and not the plant, and how aware of this system are they? And once they realize that there's an entire system of the body to receive these cannabinoids, does that change their attitude? It absolutely does, and that's a great point. I'm glad you I'm glad you brought it up. Really, uh, you know, as uh, physicians, many of us are, are scientists by nature and in heart. So when you can explain to somebody that there there is really um, an endogenous or or an, eff an effect on a neurotransmitter and chemical level that's going to affect the, the uh, have a physiological response in the body, that physicians and providers really can help relate to that a lot. So more so than hey, you know, what what is this doing? This is just dulling symptoms no 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 we can actually point to, to to definitive benefits that that we can see and we've the research has has helped to show that so far but we really need more to pinpoint that down uh, and to help convince the masses what's your response to the DEA when they say there's no medical value and no evidence of any medical value for cannabis I, it's upsetting uh, I to be, to be frank, I think um, at this point, there's obviously been shown a very uh, big potential utility um, for cannabis and medical marijuana. Uh, and, and I think that really the big thing would be to deschedule so that further research can be done. Um, I, I think the way that they have it where states at this point are essentially um, doing things what they think is right and the, and the, and the federal government is somewhat lacking behind. Uh, there have been some steps forward, which is fantastic. And I personally feel that it's really only a matter of time. Um, so I just try to, as much as I can, focus on what we can do to help the, help convince the government, um, the FDA, the DEA, everybody that this is going to be a sound medical treatment and that the research really needs to be done um, uh, and we can prove it to them. Is there any last point that you would like to make about the conference coming up in April? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that a question I get asked a lot is, how do you talk to clinicians or providers who really are uh, against medical marijuana and aren't interested in doing this at all? Why should they come to the convention? And I would say this, it's it's for your patients. Um, and the reason is that you, we as providers have an obligation to our patients to understand the treatment options that are available today. If your patient has one of the disease entities or processes that could potentially benefit from medical marijuana, I, I strongly feel that as as their as their provider you are obligated to be able to explain that to them whether you believe in it or not you should be able to explain to them factually what's going on and understand it uh, yourself. And I really, that's that's my big focus, and I always like to bring that up. So it's not only if you're for mar medical marijuana, but really even if you're against medical marijuana, I just uh, we really just want everybody to be educated, and then they can make their own sound judgment. Well said. Thank you for speaking with us today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you.